Happy Friday, Calabian star children. It's time for a Friday morning rant here. And I want to start off by thanking Jonathan Strader, who does thoughts on things and stuff, for uh, boosting my, actually my top video right now, or for all time, I guess. Um, <clears throat> because he, of a video he just released that's, uh, you know... <laughs> That, that I'm that, that my video is uh, getting promoted uh, with from YouTube in association with uh, I guess YouTube decided this would be a good one. So awesome anti Mormons speak on Book of Mormon fictional or origin is uh, got, it's got 2,700 minutes in the last seven days compared to you know so last 20 in other words in the last four weeks it'll be about 5,000. Um, yeah, so half of that's coming just in the last few days since Jonathan uploaded uh, his recent video, which I'm going to talk about a little bit right now. Um, and, and we're going to do some of the comments. We've had some, a lot of good comments recently, and I know I'm behind on doing a lot of things here. I haven't finished up on you know everything that Jordan and Bubba were talking about on what Mormons believe, and... Um, S several other things, you know, actually I haven't even worked on the website in the last few days. Although if you haven't been there, uh, get over there to, uh, the Mormon truth videos, gospel topics hub. It's at dot .com, Cause a lot of these are getting organized in there along with written materials for referencing, uh, more quick, quick reference on, um, topics that help you, uh, really be able to, uh, prove whether or not, you know, the LDS church is guided by an unchanging, all-knowing, uh, really virtuous, merciful, awesome God. And, uh, <laughs> awesome God. <laughs> I sound like a born-again Christian. Okay, so, uh, yeah. Prove all things, hold fast to that which is true. So, get over to the site because, um, I'm putting more and more material on it. And, uh... Got some cool pictures. Anyway, we'll go back there momentarily. All right, so let's complete about a 20 second ad here on the web page, the Mormon Truth Videos Gospel Topics Hub, because people that know me know I like to be creative. So we got videos and and written material in here, and it's just full of, I think, good stuff. And it's I'm, I've got so much more to do. So I've got some of my best videos up here arranged per topic and uh i just think it's and i like to do cool pictures you know gotta face it some of these pictures are pretty cool mormon artists whoever made that was pretty they did a good thing all right restoring a stairway to heaven let's just look at the picture again then we'll get into the topic which we're going to discuss or multiple topics we're going to go to jonathan streeter's video See, if you haven't seen that, is that picture is the boss, isn't it? Isn't that cool? Led Zepp and the San Diego Temple. Woo! Okay. <laughs> Here we go. So back on. Uh, so 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 Jonathan just re released this video, like I don't know, couple, uh, 24th or something, called "Discovering Truth by Challenging It." And so it's a five minute video and the first like minute and 40 seconds is, you know, the story of, um, you know, guys, blind dudes checking out an elephant and feeling his tusk or his tail or his, you know, or his, or, or his foot or his leg and, or his trunk and or his ear and deciding this is what an elephant is. Kind of like if you were listening to a Tony Robbins uh, seminar video and, and he would say, well, you know, you thought the whole party was about such and such because you talked to someone who was you know who was unhappy at the party or you talked to someone that was you know excited at the party because uh, you know they had a new business venture or, or, or a new uh you know boyfriend or girlfriend or, or whatever it was and whatever you focused on was what it was all about so he starts off with that business with you know with the parable of the elephant you know blind dudes in the elephant but then he gets into some other stuff that um I think is uh, is pretty uh, interesting. It's uh, well, anyway. Let's listen to a little bit. I hope Jonathan doesn't mind. 
I uh, I think he's he's uh, he's he's a thinker of thoughts. He is, and this is going to talk about the processes by which we mm, view our world, just like what I was just talking about. All right, and he's going to put the accent. He's going to try to talk like Dita, but you know, Jonathan, I think. I, I think that I'm just a little better at it than you are. However, we're going to listen and see what you have to say. We simply don't know all things. We can't see everything, and many of the things which we may preconceive to be true would be shown to be false if we would simply open our minds to the possibility that we might be wrong. Because we tend to hold on to our beliefs and ignore contradictory evidence, we have to remember our bias and keep a mind open to new evidence, even and especially if it contradicts dearly held beliefs. That is because it is dangerous and arrogant to assume that we already possess the complete, correct, and incorruptible truth. If we assume that we already have the truth as it was, as it is, and as it will be, then we will never be able to correct any of our errors or adapt to new knowledge. The principles of reason and logic, tempered with an understanding of our own biases and a willingness to overcome them, offer us the best chance to detect error and pursue the truth. <clears throat> so that was a little bit long right there, but... Uh that that's really that that's that's really true those are some those are those are processes we go through and when you think about let's say you know the uh the 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 little lecture at the veil for instance when they're talking about uh all truth is circumscribed into one great whole um or when you think about section 93 verse 24 is it on uh, the Doctrine and Covenants where it says, And truth is knowledge of things as they are and as they were and as they are to come. So we're taught that the LDS um, religion does encompass all truth. Uh, we're taught things like, um, or we were, I mentioned this in the Billy, in the Hallie Everts video just the other, what was that, last Friday, if I've been lagging that hard? You know, where we're, we're, we're taught that the prophet can speak out on any subject about anything in the world and he doesn't, you know, he doesn't need a, a doctorate in, you know, whatever, you know, rocketry or physics or, or astronomy or marine biology or, um, you know, uh, archaeology or any, any, any of these uh, sciences or disciplines to be able to speak God's truth on it. And just like Joseph Smith didn't need, you know, any of that to tell us that the, you know, the, the Lord's law of health was to not drink t coffee or tea, uh, and, and, but mild drinks of barley are okay, and we shouldn't eat a lot of meat, that's good. Shouldn't be killing animals, that's what it says in, you know, his redo of Genesis as well, unless you're starving, you, that the blood of every animal will be required at our hands instead of the blood of every person. Like it said in, in in the KGV before he did his uh, Joseph Smith translation, I think, if I'm recalling correctly. But, you know, with the revealed word of the Lord, we now know that Coca-Cola is okay. You're worthy to enter the temple if you drink Coke, but not if you drink, you know, antioxidant-filled green tea, because that isn't worthy. As a matter of fact, you weren't worthy, I suppose, uh, well... What, weren't they preaching that you couldn't even you shouldn't even be, be drinking hot soup? Well, you know, if it's too hot, you might get throat cancer. But anyway, did anybody remember the days when decaffeinated coffee was okay? But now caffeine's not the problem. But it's the word of the Lord, because God knows everything, and He reveals it through His servants, the prophets, like it says in Amos chapter three, I think. Good missionary scripture. So. Jonathan is pointing out the fact, at least I think he is, it brought to my mind that, yeah, we have the assumption that we have the truth. We have the truth. We are, if you're Jehovah's Witnesses, you'd say we are in the truth. But in Mormonism, you say we have the restored gospel. That's the, 
that's the you know that's the lingo that we use that every 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 church that that has you know leaders that speak with and for God exclusively uh, have their own lingo so that's our lingo so we assume we've got the truth but why does that mean we have to hide from things that might show us something different why should we be afraid to leave lds.org or jw.org if you're a if you're a jw you know um, if we have the truth shouldn't it bear examination so good points Jonathan uh, let's hear a little bit more now what is this process? It is the process of rational thought. There are charlatans all over the world who will attempt to demonize and distort rationality. They will tell you that since nothing can be known with absolute certainty, then you should doubt your own mind and submit to their decrees for which they claim a divine sanction. As you accept the responsibility to seek after truth with an open mind and a humble heart, you will understand that you might be wrong about some things. But the prophet of God can't be wrong, and that's the problem. The authority claims made by Joseph Smith and his successors um, are also the Achilles heel of the brethren. Because... In claiming that this knowledge comes directly from God and it cannot be questioned that as Joseph Smith said obedience is the first law of heaven and that he spoke in the name of the Lord then every time they contradict each other themselves and change what the gospel is the gospel in, in yeah, and when, when they when they make changes then they've screwed themselves over because Jesus Christ is supposed to know all things so we look in the Book of Mormon where we've got God the Father and Jesus Christ are one in the same person. We look in the Joseph Smith translation of the Bible, Luke chapter 10, verse 23 in the JST, which says that, you know, Jesus reveals to you that he is the Father and the Father is the Son, you know? And then, and, and then, and then he, he got, you know, lecture on five, number five, lecture, you know, in the lectures on faith, lecture number five, you've got Joseph Smith changing the tune and said, well, God's actually separate from Jesus, but God's just a spirit and Jesus has a, you know, a resurrected body and the Holy Ghost, he's like the Microsoft cloud. He's the, he's the combined mind and will of God in Christ. And then, he, then he changes it again. And you've got what we've got in section 130, where God, the Father, and Jesus Christ are separate individuals, but God catches up to Jesus in the LDS new plan of uh, exaltation, and he's got a resurrected, glorified body, and the Holy Ghost, well, as we know, he's a, a man, a spiritual person, and that we're all spiritual people. So as the teachings evolved, as Joseph Smith came up with something new, the problem is, the truth isn't the same today as it was yesterday. New speak replaced old speak. And section 93, verse 24, basically <laughs> got violated. And truth is knowledge of things as they are and as they were and as they are to come. So it wasn't, truth was not eternal truth. Actually, in other words, when he said that God the Father is has it has a resurrected body, glorified body, and so does Jesus Christ. In in section one thirty, he violated what he said when he said God was a spirit, and he violated what he put in the Book of Mormon and in the Joseph Smith translation of the Bible. So that means he spoke authoritatively in the name of God, and then it wasn't true after all, according to what he said later, which is the same problem we have with uh, many other teachings that uh, the apologists will now just tell us, well, those weren't official doctrine. Of course they weren't. Of course they were, but of course they say that because now you've got to have a corporate board of directors for the, you know, <clears throat> corporation of the president of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints probably to really decide what is doctrine. And if it's not doctrine, we just shouldn't pay attention, right? Even though it says, section 21 says, thou shalt give heed unto all his words. It doesn't say just to, you know, what a corporate board of directors approves this doctrine. So if Joseph Smith was truly a prophet, and if section 1 is correct, where if it was Jesus Christ speaking, not that I believe anyone ever named Jesus Christ ever lived, but in his, 
if he said, whether by my own voice or the voice of my servants, it's the same, then we got to pay attention to all his words. And when Brigham Young speaks in general conference in the name of Jesus Christ and says, you know, things like, uh, well, Jesus Christ said atonement didn't atone, atone for certain sins, so your own blood must be shed, um, or that Adam is God, uh, or these things that were denied as false doctrine by Spencer W. Kimball, then there's a problem. There's a problem when, when, when we see in the Gospel Topics essays that it says, um, a skin of blackness is not a sign of divine disfavor or a curse. But we read in 2 Nephi chapter 5, that the skin of blackness was put upon the Lamanites as a curse. And in Alma 3, it says it was a curse, and it, was, it, it says it said that it was a mark, you know, and the Lord caused the skin of blackness to come upon them. And so they've disavowed that in that statement. They said that's false, it's not true. And then they disavowed all these other uh, uh, supportive teachings along with that, uh, having to do with race and uh, pre-mortal uh, life choices. You know, things like hanging out on a fence or maybe even playing basketball during a, uh, a war in heaven. You just, you weren't there standing up for Jesus or Jehovah. Jehovah, that's always funny too, since the Catholics made that up like, you know, AD 1300. But Jesus, that's his pre-mortal name. So I guess he must have inspired, you know, Rim and Martini to make that up, right? And then somehow it found its way into the book of Abraham, representing something 2200 BC. Just, you know... 3,300 years off from when it, that name was invented, but it shows up in the Book of Abraham, and it shows up in the Book of Mormon, and, oh, Joseph Smith. The more we look at all of these things, like Jonathan is saying here, when we examine truth, what do we find? Do we find consistency, or do we find that the story keeps changing, and, and the guys like Joseph Smith keep screwing up because they contradict themselves and do it in the name of of an all-knowing, unchanging God. The all-knowing, unchanging God who gave authority to Joseph Smith, to Brigham Young, to Thomas Monson, to, you know, Russell Nelson, to all these guys, keeps changing his story. And he can't make up his mind. So, um, assuming we've got all the truth, and working from that mindset can blind, can blind us. And it does blind us so many times. And then, of course, we're just made to feel bad if we, you know, we, we've lost faith if we question. We mustn't question our leaders. It's, it's a sign of weakness. It's a sign of, of disobedience, of rebellion. You know, I recognize thee now. Thou art Lucifer, he, he who was cast out of Father's presence for rebellion. Isn't that interesting how rebellion is demonized? It's a problem when you're running an authoritarian organization to have a, a, a disobedience or rebellion. We're not supposed to think for ourselves. Oh, they tell us we think for ourselves, but do we? Do we? Bruce McConkie taught us that faith was a gift from God as a result of personal righteousness. So they turn that into circular thinking, and Dallin Oaks tells us, which is quoted in the Seminary Teacher's Manual, that, you know, sure, we're supposed to use our brains, like Mom and Dad told us, except, of course, when it comes to the Gospel, then mm, we have prophets to lead us, and worthy Latter-day Saints depend on the witness of the Spirit and not on any set of historical facts. Did you get that? We do not depend on fact. We depend on a witness of the Spirit, which comes to us if we are worthy. And worthy means obedient. So that's circular reasoning. That's not reasoning. It's circular mind control. In other words, if you don't get the right answer from Jesus, affirming that the Book of Mormon is true and the Dallin Oaks is led by the Holy Spirit, then it's because you're not worthy. All right. Let's see what else Jonathan has to say. This will enable you to look at evidence and conclusions you might have previously ignored. You may become more tolerant of others, more open to listening, more prepared to understand, more inclined to build up ideas which invite and withstand scrutiny and tear down false notions that beg you not to question or to doubt. Don't question. You'll be more 
willing to seize a truth if you don't assume you already have it. It is my plea that you will seek the truth earnestly and unceasingly, that you will yearn to think critically and remember those biases and fallacies which may distort your perceptions so that you can account for and overcome them. Even when you think you have found it, keep questioning and searching. So, I'd like to mention that whatever our belief system is, whether it's Mormonism or atheism or, you know, JWidge or Christianity or whatever it is, it seems that we have a mechanism within ourselves to try to, um, to try to conform the evidence or interpret the evidence of our experience in life, uh, to to be in harmony with whatever our belief system is. So, in other words, good example, Hallie Everts, um, in her uh, vaccinations um, uh, video, she talks about you know the, uh, the you know the uh, pharmaceutical industry and so forth, and and uh, a lot of harm that are caused by vaccinations and that sort of a thing, and then. She knows that, you know, she knows in some degree, probably not fully, that, that the church, you know, has probably pretty much sponsored the whole, you know, is pro-vaccine. <coughs> she may not know that, you know, they're all involved with like UNICEF or the, you know, World Health Organization pushing vaccinations all over the place. But like I said before, my son had to have a vaccination to serve, you know, in the United States, from the United States. So that was ridiculous. And... What she says is, oh, well, you know, um, they were just, you know, functioning as men, not as prophets then. Kind of like when, you know, the state patriarch was the divorce attorney for my wife of my youth and lying, printing all these just horrible lies. And I went to the state president and I go, I thought this dude's supposed to be a prophet. Look at this crap this guy's printing about me. And uh, he goes, well, just think of him as a lawyer. And so... You know, just think of him as another attorney. He was an attorney too, but you know, he was an ambulance chasing guy. He was a really cool guy, actually. But uh, the patriarch, you know, I thought, hey, this guy's supposed to be inspired of God. Why does he write this trash? You know, he should know better. The spirit should reveal to him that that this person is lying to him to try to do anything to, um, you know, win her point, and. Uh, well, in the end, truth prevailed. So, um, yeah, the patriarch actually didn't have a Superman uh, jersey on like, <laughs> like I was challenged to uh, think about. And uh, he dumped her. So, um, was that inspiration? No, she ran out of money. Yep, that's what happened. 300 bucks an hour back in the 90s was a lot of money. Um, <laughs> And the patriarch was willing to uh, write anything for 300 bucks an hour, I guess. So the point being, um, <laughs> these sources of truth, <laughs> they're not as infallible as you think, folks. All right, pausing here. And when our sources of truth are saying things that are provably false and we know it, we have to come up with a reason why it's okay. So that's the kind of thing we get in the Gospel Topics essays. They say, well, Brigham Young, you know, he wasn't receiving a revelation that, you know, Negroes shouldn't be in the temple or have the priesthood. Actually, of course, he didn't need to. It's already in Abraham chapter 1, but they always ignore that because they don't want to condemn Joseph Smith and the scriptures coming from God. That, that, would, that would kill him. So they focus on Brigham Young and say, oh, well, he was just product of his environment. You know, he's white privilege or what he hated Negroes. And they all wanted Negro slaves. Don't talk about the fact there were, you know, hundreds of thousands of white slaves at the same time, too. But that doesn't fit the uh, politically correct narrative. So we just say, you know, it was Brigham. He's just a prejudiced bastard. And, uh, you know, he just wasn't functioning as a prophet when he, uh, when he made certain policies or something. And, you know, the next dozen prophets or so, they just weren't really awake to how much God loves Negroes now, right? You know, ever since they had to start loving Negroes, uh, about four months before the Sao Paulo Temple opened in Brazil, the only and first 
um, a, a temple in South America in an area where they basically wouldn't have been able to have enough temple workers, obviously, because too many people had at least one drop of Negro blood in Sao Paulo. So, Spencer got him up a revelation, and the word of God changed, and everything that Brigham said about waiting until the millennium to get the priesthood to the Negroes went out the door. So, Brigham just must not have been inspired, right? We have to make it conform, because if we say, okay, Brigham was inspired, then God changed his mind, and God's not supposed to change his mind on these things, because basically he had a lie. So, there's a problem. There's always a problem. Spencer Kimball said that, you know, gay people are, are not born that way. Um, they, they decide to because they're just wicked pervs. Because that's blasphemy, he said, to think that God would screw up. But God evidently screws up a whole lot. So, sorry, Spencer. <clears throat> yeah. And, and, and so as, and the more things change, the more we see that we eliminate old speak in order to make room for new speak, because if you can plainly see in the Book of Mormon where it says, you know, skin of blackness <laughs> was put upon the Lamanites as a curse, and you look at that side by side with what they say today, which is that, no, no, none of that's true. <laughs> if none of that's true, then the Book of Mormon's not true, which according, you know, if they say the Book of Mormon's true, the church is true, and all that stuff, which is also a bunch of <coughs> ridiculous... Um, platforms there since that def definitely you know does that mean 200 versions of mormonism are true that's another one of the ridiculous things we hear but we just keep hearing you know one thing after another to justify and then they try to eliminate things like the journal of discourses of course because the more we can see the contradictions the more we can say you know what this really doesn't make any sense at all to me so um good video jonathan Good video, but I don't know. I, I think uh, yeah, we ought to collaborate and, and do something where Jonathan and I do some voice impressions because eh, he's got a couple now. All right, I'm going to play one of mine from the beginning of my Dieter Uchtdorf one just so we can compare. People can vote and see who's got the better German accent, me or Jonathan. This will just be for fun. All right, so here's my video. A letter to an apostle asking Dieter Uchtdorf about Bible verses and errors in the <clears throat> Book of Mormon. All right, let's listen. Jonathan Streeter beat this with German accent. Oh, forgive me. I have slipped into the celestial language again. It's so easy to do when I'm looking at data. Former executive for Lufthansa. Is that not a spin-off from the Hitler's Luftwaffe? Well, we won't talk about that, will we? It's time to get into the next chapter of our Letter to an Apostle by Paul A. Douglas. All right, I rest my case. Top that one, Jonathan. I'll get back on some of the comments later. I got some stuff to do. Dodger game out.